All right, hey guys, welcome back. Uh, just gonna do some wiring here. Fix the kill switch wiring that I'm running inside the car. Uh, had a discussion with a guy who does 12 volt. Says that the way I the way I want it to work will will work, which is good. Um, less wires to run inside. Just running the alternator to the battery and then run all the wires that need to have power to them inside the car and then when you kill the kill switch it kills the battery and the alternator and well, well obviously power to the to the wiring itself for the wiring harness and the engine bay and the interior All right, so eventually I'm gonna have to make a bracket for this, but this is the kill switch I went with. I also have like a, a carburetor choke cable. So eventually I can run just that out the windshield cowl and drill it in there and make a bracket for that as well so it's sturdy. And then I have my kill switch inside and the pull cable out here. Should be, that's what I had in the last car so it should work pretty good. Uh, Moroso's nice stuff it came with stickers, which helps so you can have it on the windshield to point at where the kill switch cable is and whatnot there. Some installation instructions apparently. For NHR drag racing rules, but we are not running drag racing. Well, I might run this at Street Legals a couple times just to see how the Atlas does in it. Um, hopefully it does well. It should put down about 
400 to 420 wheel. It's a built 5.3. It's a board 20 thou over. It's got uh, forged Molle Power Pack Plus pistons. The hardened anodized ring for extreme duty. So when I do boost it, it's ready. And eagle rods. It has a balanced crank. ARP main studs. ARP head studs. Uh, Deutschwerk 60 pound injectors. Uh, Texas Speed Cam Kit. Dual valve springs. Titanium retainers. Chromoly push rods. Uh, I did a Colloys timing kit with a billet racing timing chain. And ATI damper. I want to spin it up pretty high one day. This year we might rev to about 68. 7,000 depending on when the power drops off NA. And then... We'll boost. I want to run it up to about 75, 8. So... Should be able to take it. But get a running NA and break it in and see how it goes first. Okay, so the factory terminal disconnects from this little plate here that has the uh, has three bolts sticking out of it. Or, so one can run the alternator and one can run the starter and then I had this attached to it so it could connect to the battery. So I took that off, ran my battery wire inside. I now have the alternator bat wire hooked up to this terminal. And I tried it out. It works, kills the power. And it should while it's running because it just one side runs to the wiring to power up the whole car and the other side is alternator and battery. So theoretically that should work. And the guy I talked to that's a 12 volt wizard. He said it'll work too. So it's here it is. Uh, I'm gonna have to make a bracket mount up there somewhere. Have it out of the way, make sure it doesn't get in the way of my clutch leg. And then I gotta tuck all that wiring up. Eventually, there's my floor intrusion bar, so it's kinda tight and I can't really fit it. Yeah, I can't really maneuver it to get back in there. I tried even with the dash out and it was not happening so I'm just gonna tuck it up gotta make sure my gas popper is accessible and then my yeah make sure all that stuff's out of the way I don't hit it when I'm trying to shift gears or when I'm trying to hit the get throttle because I was measuring with my foot it's pretty tight so I gotta try and get that shimmied up there a bit and then I'll put the gas pedal back on and I run the throttle cable and drill a hole in the firewall because it's factory drive by wire. This is drive by cable. So I gotta drill a hole somewhere in there. And then theoretically, it'll come out somewhere in that vicinity. So that is gonna be tight, but hopefully I don't drill into anything. I'll take my time and figure that out. Hopefully it's goes over okay and I don't wreck anything but all right so today we are gonna do the front coilovers get those installed at least and after that I'll work on the fuel lines I do have to move some wires too still it's kind of like a last priority to be honest, the suspension and other stuff is a bigger job, so tuck and wiring and stuff like that can wait until this is all done here. But yeah, can't really see. Grab the old trusty light here. Super stock. And uh, yeah, there's only 130,000 K on this car. So everything still looks really nice in good shape. And here I am to cut it up and tear it apart and do what I need to do with it. So I'll, uh, wish I had a stand or something for the camera, but I'll maybe get a camera person one day once COVID's over and get that stuff rolling but for now I'll just uh, do as much as I can and then I'll film some updates 
All right, so I got brake line is connected. Just pushed on right here with uh, some rubber grommets. And then there's a 12 mil bolt holding on that brake line. So it's really simple. 17 mil bolt down there for the bottom of the coil over. And then it looks like 12 or 14 mil nuts up here. So I'm gonna pull these next and get the old strut out. Okay, so what I did was I removed that nut right there, the cotter pin first and then the nut, and then um, I was able to maneuver this arm out of the way so I get the old strut out. But the new ISR coilovers are in. I lowered them, I measured the stock strut, and then I measured this one and lowered it based off the height of that one. So should be about an inch and a half, two inches lower. I don't want it too low. I like um, to have a little bit of flex room. And plus I have a heavy cast iron V8 in the front now. So don't want to lower it too much because it'll squat enough from the engine anyways. So yeah, this wasn't too bad. Um, everything fits nice. So I'm going to move on to the other side now. All right, so I got this side done now. Uh, I had to drop the sway bar to get the arm to lower low enough to get the stock strut off and then get the coil over on. ISR makes good quality product. Very happy with the fitment and the way it is. And next on the list, we'll get to doing some fuel lines. Hopefully get closer to start up. Uh, I got oil lines coming in and uh, fittings to run the oil filter relocation and then run the oil cooler after once we get the just the filter hooked up so I don't have any uh, break in metal shavings running through the oil cooler or the AccuSump or anything. Don't want a chance blowing the motor so or I know what that's filtered for but uh, you know, pretty be safe than sorry. Okay, so I ran the new fuel line. I'm just cutting it underneath and putting on a fitting so I can run it to this fuel rail here, have my feed there, and then we'll do the return there. Um, put the fuel pressure regulated there. So I'll run the line from there to there, and then I'll run my return straight down behind the motor. So I'll keep it away from the heat. There's the dash 8 line there. I'm going to put my fuel filter right in here. Tuck it up real nice so that way it stays out of the way and has lots of... Keeps away from the ground and... Don't have any issues with that. Don't want to scrub it or... Anything like that. Alright, so in here we have... It's a push lock style, it's a 3 8 fitting, goes over the uh, stock fuel line and then you put the 90 on there. And in between that I'll run, I'll have to drill a hole and run the return line there with the bulkhead fitting and hopefully the 90 fits in there. Then I'll install my air motive 340 pump and then I'll take the stock one and put it over there and then you run a hose, rubber hose to the crossover tube so you don't run into fuel starvation issues because these have are notorious for that and anything under half a tank you get too much fuel slosh and then the tiny little hose or metal tube in there can't keep up with returning fuel back over so running the stock fuel pump helps eliminate that issue when you run the pump and then a rubber hose to that metal crossover tube so when you're drifting or road course or racing any sort, then you don't have any fuel starvation issues, which would be good. Don't want to lean out. But I'm going to get to finishing this fitting, and then I will run the return over and possibly drill in the fuel pressure regulator today. Uh, got to see if I have any self-tapper -ta bolts or anything like that. I don't know if I do, so I'll look into that. 
there it is. Got the return coming up. And it goes to a 45 and goes back down beside the other one. The feed comes up. They both ran in the car. Until next time, like, subscribe, share, ring the bell, do what you do. Thanks for watching.